This little chai stall took me five weeks, hundreds of hours, and more blender crashes than I'd like to admit. This chai stall was actually part of another project for just a four second scene. But while designing the chai stall for this shot, I got really into it as I've frequented tapris like this many times and I wanted to recreate an authentic feel. The warmth, the nostalgia, the taste of that chai in the rain will never be matched by anything else. As always, I started with a very basic block out. Simple primitives for the floor, walls and a tin roof that we usually see in stalls like these. To visualize it, I went into cycles, added a small point light, made the world black and added a volume scatter. Next, I started adding more details into the scene with primitive shapes. Plastic containers, bottles, chai glasses. I just modeled very basic shapes with primitives that I could use later to refine my models or use as reference. Now in a professional production pipeline, there would be storyboard artists who would storyboard the entire thing before any 3D modeling was even started. But I am not an artist and right now I cannot afford to hire one. So I used the basic scene that I had and I blocked out all the shots out of my 20 planned shots. And I have to tell you, it was a huge lifesaver. Because then I could make an asset list of everything I needed to design, what assets I could source from CC0 or CC BY sources, and I also had a complete shot list that I could use to monitor the progress and the completion level of each shot. For a solo creator, this might seem like overkill at first, but trust me, as your projects get more complicated, it will be a definite necessity. Then I collected a lot of reference images and I was ready to step into the next phase, modeling, starting with the hero assets. I separated my assets into different categories depending on how close they were going to be to the camera. Now the level of detail you assign is completely up to you. For example, I added a cloth wrap over the handle of the saucepan and I spent a good 40 minutes sculpting folds into the cloth and another 30-40 minutes using curves to make a string that wraps around the cloth. It was overkill, maybe, but ultimately I was happy with the result and how the saucepan looked. Next, I wanted to make the tabletop on which we are going to have the stove and saucepan etc. As it was going to be a close-up and I wanted to control the surface details. I just used some cubes for simple planks and added some weathering, erosion on them and used more primitives to make the base and the legs. Next was the stove. I used lots of reference images and used bevels, loop cuts and modifiers like boolean etc. to model the stove. My modeling topology is not the greatest, but I'm getting better. Next on the hero asset list was the chai glass, the iconic Indian tea glass we are used to seeing at chai shops all around the country. Then I started modeling the bulb from a simple sphere. I know guys, I'm showing only the time lapses of the modeling, but hold on for a while, you're gonna get a surprise. The bulb was there only in one shot, but it was a close-up shot and I really wanted to keep it. So I took time to even design the filament with curves inside the bulb. And honestly, it was great modeling practice and I learned few things for the future. And also the shot turned out really great in my opinion, so that was a win. The next asset was the snacks packets that we usually see hanging at the back of the stalls. It was actually just a plane with some cloth simulation on it and I used AI to generate some different textures for them. I also modeled this classic Bhagwan shelf and some plastic containers that we see in our kitchens and shops. And slowly my scene started coming together. It started looking more authentic with more details that I added. Modeling was honestly the longest part of this project but I'm releasing some assets for you for free and you can go check them out on my Gumroad page. There will also be some paid assets which you can purchase if you are interested to use them in your scenes. This is my first asset drop and there might be some mistakes so please let me know in your feedbacks. Then I started replacing the block out assets with the assets that I modeled one by one. Trying to create as much variation as I possibly can. Because though technically scenes are man-made, they start to look a little bit artificial if we don't randomize some details. And I definitely went back into my memory a lot to remember as many details I could about street side shops and stalls. Then came the most harrowing part of any 3D modeling process. 
UV unwrapping. This is only necessary if you are planning to use PBR textures or you want to texture in an external software like Armor Paint or Substance Painter. It was a very tedious process but I did it because I wanted to add some burn marks, scratches and other details onto the saucepan. For this project I tried out Substance Painter. I have not used it in many projects. I am still evaluating it and learning it honestly. So there's no tutorial about the Substance Painter part for it right now. Sorry guys. But anyway, there are many other free alternatives as well like Armor Paint, Quixel Mixer etc. And some Blender add-ons also support texture painting and blending. So definitely look into those. Also while texturing these two assets in Substance Painter, I realized I wouldn't be able to do it for the whole project. So I used it only for the hero assets. And then for the rest of the assets, I went to good old Blender Kit because most of the materials on Blender Kit are completely royalty free and you can even use procedural materials and tweak them to your own liking. In the texturing phase, it's most important how you want your scene to feel like. That will dictate what kind of textures to use, clean or modern or grimy and used. You obviously know we went the second route here. And honestly, there are no fancy materials here. Just the principal BSDF shader some surface imperfections for the roughness. Plug that into a color ramp and use it as a bump node for your normal. If you watch my other videos, you'll definitely notice some of the techniques and tricks I've used to bring this tri stall to life. After the modeling and the texturing pass, it was time to add small details like cans, cylinders, drums, baskets, etc. that you would find in a desi stall like this. If I decided to model all the assets required for this shot, I would probably go crazy and it would take years. So for the background details, I just used Sketchfab models that had CC attribution licenses. Also huge shout out to the Sanctus library add-on which I've used to add decals onto the walls. You can see my full video that shows how to use this feature. And slowly my chai stall came to life and I was really happy with how it was looking. With all the details in the background, the clutter on the table, and all the hero assets were looking quite good as well. And the rest of the scene was empty. It was just an HDR and a couple of lights. To fill things inside the plastic containers, I just duplicated the meshes, selected some of them, scaled it down and made them solid inside. And I also sculpted the meshes a little bit to create variation. And for texturing, I picked food materials from Blender Kit and they looked quite good from a distance. Blender Kit has a huge variety of food materials to choose from. Then came the physical simulations that make the scene feel alive. I added a simple cylinder for the rope that holds the bulb together, pinned the top vertex and then added a wind and turbulence field and ran a cloth simulation on the cylinder. Then select the bottommost vertex of the cylinder and parent it with the bulb choosing vertex mode. It was not perfect and there were some glitches I had to solve so I'll probably make a full video about cloth simulation later. Some of you also like the water boiling effect, so you can watch my full video that's up here to know more about the full process. Also check out the molecular add-on video that unlocks the full potential of the particle system in Blender and help me create the sugar effect. And lastly the dynamic paint video that I created these puddles with. I really struggled with the actual liquid simulation though. I used the flip fluid add-on which made it easier but I have not done it enough to know how to properly animate objects inside a liquid simulation and make it work properly. It was a lot of trial and error and a liquid simulation tutorial is going to take some time to make. And then it was just a matter of setting up my shots according to the storyboard blocking I had done before. Added more details like droplets and stuff. Since I had all the shots blocked already, I duplicated the master scene into the 20 shots that I had and brought in the cameras from the short blocking projects which made my work a lot easier. The biggest challenge during this project was adding details and clutter, realistic texturing, lighting and believable physics simulations. There were no smoke simulations because honestly my 5 year PC couldn't handle it and it was struggling on this project already. For the smoke, there were just plain smoke cards with some transparency. So here's what I learned from this project and I hope it helps you too. This is my first cinematic piece that I've released, but it comes after 4 years of on and off learning, making silly 3D videos, some random green screen music videos for my music channel, Dissonant Records. Some are unreleasable, never seen before footage, locked in vaults. The point is, it's really hard. It takes a lot of patience, tedious work, but once you see your first project come together and you can't wait to go on to the next one, 
just for the sake of creating art, not to meet any deadlines. That's when you become a real artist. So hang in there, work hard and go make your first short film. Follow Pixelbender for much more awesome content coming soon.